Well, well, well. David Nunez here on TechSax Rewind with these jokers, and this is presented to you by, do you guys remember? T-Mobile. They want you to do what? Verizon. No, it's T-Mobile. <laughs> That'll get us fired. Uh, visit T-Mobile.com slash across America to learn how to get more value and coverage through T-Mobile. Thank you. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Can somebody turn on the teleprompter? All right, so I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask everybody the same question. Zoe, what was your favorite part of the show today? Um, OB definitely getting kind of rowdy. Emily? Most definitely OB. It was a highlight. I'm going to say David did kind of rowdy. I don't think I got rowdy. <laughs> but you get a race. I don't handle that. You can stand up. That's what I mean by that. All right, so on the show, we had Olin going after Ryan Fowler. Alabama fans were listening. By the way, for those of you Alabama fans listening right now, keep it up. In fact, comment, tell us how terrible we are. I love it because we have this thing in the algorithm that allows us to get paid double from people from Alabama. So continue to comment. It's just helping pay our NIL fund. All right, so we have that. We had 22 and 22. Who was 22 and 22? Anybody remember? Thank you. Digging in. You, did you remember? Yeah. yeah, I'm glad he's always here. Goodness gracious. Now, Chris Taylor, he talked a lot about wide receivers because, you know, he knows that position. And Adam Spencer, Saturday Down South, gave us his thoughts on everybody there in the SEC. It's Texas Rewind. I was already planning on discussing what he brought up to me, but in a different way. And I'm going to, by the way, it's the go hour with Olin Buchanan, our Heisman Trophy voter and columnist. So, OB, you, you brought up to me, yesterday was August the 4th, right? Mm -hmm. And all over social media, especially from Alabama fans, they were calling it A&M Day, right? Yeah. Because of 8-4, and four, which, by the way, in Jimbo's time, they went 8-5 and five once and 8-4 and four last year. Okay? That's it. It's not like they've done that every year he's been here, but whatever. One time against the, what is generally regarded as one of the most challenging schedules in the history of college football. I think he played four teams that were ranked number one at the time, I mm -hmm. think. Or at some time they were ranked number one. And one time with your uh, a rash of injuries that included your quarterback and, you know, your offensive line. Right. So it's all over social media. Happy A&M Day, yada, 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 yada. And a guy that I really liked up until about two weeks ago <laughs> got into the act as well. So take the story from here, Olin Buchanan. Well, I wanted to send Ryan Fowler. Um, this is the guy we're talking about. He's a he he's a Alabama cheerleader that moonlights as a radio guy, uh, which is fine. I get it. If you know you're gonna you're gonna want your team to win, you're gonna be a yeah. fan for that team. But there should be a certain amount of I don't know journalistic integrity in where in where you actually look at things. I mean, this guy, I was on his show once, and he tried, before it was signed, sealed, and delivered, he tried to argue that Harvey Updike wasn't necessarily guilty of poisoning the Auburn trees. How do you argue that? Did he have any points? He had none. Or he tried, and I shot him down. Yeah. I said, dude, he call, the dude called the radio show and was the only person who knew that they had been— Was it Fine Bomb he called? Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. And then he said, well, yeah, but he was saying so. He was the only one who knew. You know, come on, give it up. But anyway. Um, I'm sure they knew each other from a family reunion or something. So um, anyway, so I wanted to uh, – I was, I, was, I was tempted to uh, message him. But you didn't. And, and I didn't. I decided to take the high road, and I said, oh, wait. But I want to say, look, because I told him uh, when we were in – in uh, Atlanta, and he made some kind of comment. I said, if you guys would do your homework, then you would find, you know, some, 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 we're talking about A&M, how A&M recruits and oh, how could they possibly, you know, I said, if you guys do any homework, which I'm convinced that nobody in Alabama does any homework. I'm in Alabama media, but you know, I saw their 40th in education. So it might be everybody. But anyway, um, if you would do any homework, then you know you would know what you're saying is preposterous, is ridiculous. But um, so I was thinking, oh, you know what? Just two years ago, A and M went nine and one against ten against a ten game schedule. Just two years ago, and they were nine and four. And you could say, well, but they're eight and four in regular season. Does the last game count? Because I know when you've won national championship as Alabama, they've counted that last game. Sure have. Yeah. You know, do, does the game count? So. Um, yeah, so so twice they've been eight and four or eight wins. Well, again, one time that year they 
national champion LSU, Georgia, I think was number one at one time. Clemson, you know, was number one. Um, I think the five teams they lost to were all finished in the top 15. Okay, it, you have those years. Um, and again, last year it was just a, a – Louis Bellina likes to call it, oh, everybody's making excuses. There's no – sometimes it's just facts. And when you lose your starting quarterback, usually you're going to have problems. When you have two freshmen have to be th- thrust into the lineup at the offensive line, you're I mean, gonna usually you're going to have some problems. So uh, sometimes it's just facts. Um, but anyway, I wanted to say, you know, just two years ago, they won, again, nine games in a 10-game in a season. They went nine and four that first year. Uh, but that would require you to do some homework, and we've already established the fact that you don't do any homework. You just, you know, say things off the cuff uh, that make no sense, that just shows that you're ignorant. So, you know, maybe you should consider actually doing some homework, trimming that awful beard, and eating a salad. And if it gets back to Ryan, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I know. So what I'm telling you guys listening is whatever you do, do not go to Twitter and to Ryan C. Fowler on Twitter and say anything. I'm asking you, do not – got stop. I, you know what? Stop it. I, you're, I know you're being facetious. I am. But I'm kind of like – don't, don't do it. Don't take the bait on these guys. Well, look, by the way, I, I, it's, it's like the Zach thing when I talk about Calzada. Like, I really like Zach, but, you know, he struggled. Ryan Fowler's a nice dude. Like, I, I, I like the guy. But, um, you know, what happens in college football, which is why we love it, is that media members and fans feel like they've accomplished what the team has and the fans have. But we have not in the media, right? As members of the media, it, even though I am a fan of the team, I don't get credit for A&M winning the SEC title. I, people can congratulate me, right? They can win it. But it's not like I did anything, right? I'm just talking about it. OB, number 16 is... Fidel Diggs. Have you seen this guy's act at camp? He is a mammoth, strong human being. Yeah, it looks like he's been uh, uh, inspired by you, you know, since you've gotten here. You give me the some guy props is in the Looks like he's been in the – looks like he came out of the womb pumping iron. He, look, I remember him last year. This looks like he's done way more work in the oh, offseason. Yeah. Like, he is jacked, jacked. He really is. Now – does that mean he's going to be a great football player? Not necessarily. Um, but, you know, you were talking about the guys that get your attention just mm-hmm. physically and how, you know, the next Michael Clemens, well, it could have been this guy because he's kind of got that look. I don't think he's as heavy as Michael. But uh, you look at him and you say, golly, you know, it's, it's, is that, that's what a football player is supposed to look that's like. That's what you're supposed to look like. He's got to prove it. Uh, but, like, I look – you know, it's interesting. There was more than Michael Clemens last year that caught my eye, but he's like the one I go to. But to be very honest with you, this year, there's a lot of those that I'm yeah. like, maybe it could be him. Because I said it was Chris Marshall. Overton caught my attention. The freaking tight ends all caught my attention. Fidel Diggs has caught my attention. I'm like, there's a lot of, like, strong human beings. That's the way they're supposed to look, right? That's what happens when you have a great team. Now, what you have to have is a guy that plays as well as he looks, right? Yeah. And... Fidel Diggs, this is all – what number are we on, 17? This is all based – 16. 16. This is all based on projection because you can't base it on production. Last year he had like you know nine tackles. Uh, I think he had one sack, and it was in the first game against Kent yep. State. But, of course, he was behind DeMarvin Leal. You're not going to take DeMarvin Leal off the field if you can help it. So um, he's this guy that it's his time. It's his time. I made this comment. He walks like a veteran. He talks like a veteran. He runs routes like a veteran, but he's a freshman. Evan Stewart. Uh, look, I don't want to put all the pressure on this dude, but everything I'm seeing is like he's running with the ones. He's acting like the ones. Like everything about him. I'm sure you've watched some of his film, and, and you'll probably be able to see him at some point this summer. Just to, when you see this talent and the way he goes about his business, what do you see? I think it starts with his preparation. You know, I, I, I've, I've, you know, I follow him and, and watch the things that he, you know, that he does off the field with, with getting himself ready to play on, on Saturdays now. And I, I think the way that he's being trained and the attention to detail is so big. I mean, the, the biggest point that I make to wide receivers is you, you see all the stuff on social media with, with, you know, the toe drag and, and all the different head fakes and stuff. And Evan, you know, he possesses a skill set that is not taught. He has speed. 
And so when you have a receiver that has that kind of speed, you have to threaten the, the, the defensive back and make him respect your speed. And it opens up so many different things. And so that's the biggest factor that I've seen him do and see him use is utilizing that speed and stretching the defense. But he is, he is so good in the intermediate game. Um, you know, he can catch a five, seven yard slant and he can take it to the house because he does have that elite speed and he can stretch the defense, but he's technically sound when it comes to those intermediate route running, uh, you know, those route running routes. CT, I'm, I'm over here watching the other freshmen too. And I'm like, man, like they're going to have to wait, but I don't know if they're going to have to wait. Like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it's like when their time is ready this year, they're going to be out there. And at some point, Noah Thomas, I think is going to make a play this year. Like, Ooh, look at that. And then Chris Marshall is going to make a play. Like, ah, like I, I really yeah. feel that. Yeah, those, those guys, I mean, Jimbo's done a great job. That that I say Jimbo, the, the whole AM coaching staff, they've done a great job of finding guys that fit what it is that we're trying to do. I think we talked, you know, last season, you know, during the season, you have guys now that it allows you to take those eight to 10, you know, shots down the field with guys that can go up and make those plays, guys that can run, guys that can get in and out of breaks. And, you know, you look at Chris Marshall and you look at Noah Thomas big frame athletic receivers that can make plays for you if you throw it up and they can go up and get it. So, you know, this, this freshman receiver core, those three guys in particular, Evan, you know, Chris Marshall, and then Noah, man, they've, they've got a bright future. They just have to keep doing the things that they've, that has created this, the success for them thus far. Number two, Georgia. <laughs> I think so too. But I'll, I mean, if there's questions at a, other, at the, at these other schools for guys moving on to the NFL or transferring, there's gotta be those same questions with Georgia. Yeah. You don't just lose several players from that elite defense last year and expect to be anywhere near that level. Like, yeah, they still have, potentially a first round pick at every level of that defense. Jalen Carter is a home run first round pick. Then you got like Nolan Smith who could be a first round pick. You know, you have Kelly Ringo in the secondary there. Um, so they still have talent. It's just, they don't have that like, depth all across that defense right now. So they're going to take a step back there. Like that's just, that's just a fact. So it's just going to be about, can that offense sort of pick up some of the slack that the defense carried last year, you know, Last year, the Georgia wide receiving core was pretty banged up. You know, A.D. Mitchell didn't get on the field very much. Uh, Kyrus Jackson battled injuries. Uh, so they they have some guys who need to actually stay healthy this year. I mean, their tight end core is ridiculous. ridiculous but, yeah. uh, but uh, you know, if, if their receivers can stay healthy, then I think that that offense with Stetson Bennett coming back can sort of uh, pick up some of the slack there and uh, make – Georgia almost as good overall as they were last year, thanks to their defense. Close it out. I usually close it out with telling you what to do, but I just want everybody to know that right now, to my left, there's somebody stalking us. What is happening over there? Dal Dalton is looking at us. He's not happy. We're in his chair. I took over. I apologize, Dalton. What are you supposed to do after the show? Like, comment, subscribe. And what else? Anything else? David's Angels. Angels. <laughs> Creepy old guy with a bunch of young ladies. All right, we'll see you guys next time.